Melbourne Symphony Orchestra Music and Ideas event. My name is Catherine Bartholomew's class and I am Head of Artistic Planning with MSO. This means that I program a lot of the classical concerts that we present and am lucky enough to choose some of the amazing artists which we work with. Thank you. I'm lucky enough to choose some of the amazing artists which we work with. Oh, he's got a tongue. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to work with some, I can just project quite loud. I'm lucky enough to uh, choose some of the amazing artists that we work with, such as the amazing, wonderful Ray Chen, who we, we, who we will see tonight working with these fantastic young musicians. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathered, the people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. So, what an interesting evening we are in for. Thank you for joining us for this masterclass led by internationally acclaimed violinist and online personality, Ray Chen. After winning the Menuhin competition in 2008, Ray now works with the foremost orchestras and conductors around the world, has recorded many critically acclaimed albums, and even has a partnership with designer Giorgio Armani. With a passion for learning and engagement with his audiences, Ray has a broad reach around the globe. Tonight, Ray will be working with performers from the Australian Youth Orchestra. In Iche, Jasmine Milton and Robert Smith. Their pianist for this evening will be Aidan Bowes. These types of events are really important for emerging artists, and so we thank City of Melbourne, Cran Resorts Foundation, and the Packer Family Foundation for their support. As a former singer myself, I know that masterclasses can be a really daunting prospect for any musician. So I ask you, as our audience, to make these three performers feel welcomed and supported as they take part in this event, and thank them for allowing us to come into this intimate space. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ray, fresh from a performance in LA where he is uh, recording for Netflix. Ray. <laughs> what a welcome. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Um, welcome. It would be great to hear from you as to why you think masterclasses are so important and how you go about running them. Got it, got it. So, um, yeah, first of all, it's great to be here, and thanks so much for what a warm welcome back home. And, um, yeah, masterclasses are a great opportunity, of course, to learn together right? I mean, lessons are, of course, important. They're, I mean, they basically are lessons. However, it also provides an opportunity uh, for more people, other than the people, you know, usually in a one-on-one in -on -one lesson, to, to learn and uh, participate, especially. And the way that masterclasses are, are run can be very different. Uh, I, myself, uh, like to sort of follow a framework of um, working with the students together, workshopping with them on a, a particular piece, but also helping them understand uh, certain principles that they can then take uh, into their daily practice schedules, right? So it's important um, not to just simply spoon feed them, uh, you know, even insights without understanding the why. So that's really where we start is always the why, uh, asking questions about why is a certain phrase like this, why is, you know, why this certain fingerings, this certain bowing, all the whys, because the whys determine the how, right? And oftentimes we get confused a little bit and we often start with what, and then we kind of work our way backwards, right? Which is the result. However, when you do understand and you approach it from the why, then everything becomes clear. Everything's through the lens and then, you know, all the hows, oh, maybe we can, we can do this or what, what, maybe, maybe we think about this particular type of emotion then becomes clear, which then determines the what. So uh, you'll be, uh, be able to experience that tonight with uh, the, these 
talented students, I, I believe from AYO, and um, yeah, looking forward. Wonderful, thank you, Ray. Um, I'll let you get settled, and first we'll be hearing from Robert Smith, who will be workshopping the second movement of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Let's get started. Thank you. 
done, Robert. How do you feel? A little bit nervous. A bit nervous? <laughs> oh, yeah? There's, you know, a bit of an audience here tonight. Uh, well, um, sounded great. Um, look, I wanted to uh, sort of think about, have you think about, like, sort of the reason why you're on stage, right? Because you're on stage here. What's your reason? What's your reason for being a musician, right? Well, I love music, for one thing. Um, I didn't always, but I think around the age of 12 or 11, I just started to really get into playing with other people. Um, playing for other people. Yeah. There we go. Playing for other people. We'll just stop right there. <laughs> but I think that, for me, when I hear you play, you're kind of playing for yourself. You love music. That's your first reason why. And then your next reason is for other people, playing for other people. Maybe we could just, you know, it's all right. We know you love music, but how about including everybody here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, all the way to the last, last person right there. You see? person waving them right there. Yeah, hey. <laughs> oh, even did a little love heart. Yeah, okay, cool. So could you, could you just start from the... Um, why don't we start from ta di 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 just, just honestly, just take a look. It's like right there, waving, waving person. There you go. Oh, I did this. Okay, go. There you go. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's, that's already better. That's already better, all right? All right, you so already feel like there's a, a little bit more inclusiveness uh, in your sound. But um, why, don't we, why don't we get to a few hows? So like af after, you know, understanding the why, yeah, like how are, we gonna, how are we gonna play for people, right? So. I think you need to think about uh, your sound. <laughs> Wait, I'm not mic'd when I'm playing, I swear. <laughs> that is my sound. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, when, you, when you play, think about, um, you're, you're thinking very horizontally right now. I'd like you to think about the verticals as well. Because without the verticals, you, you, it's, everything's just like, sort of uh, very, very, very this, right? And, and so think about where you might want to lean in. Uh, okay, so, so right there. Yeah, can I just try, try a violin? Yeah, cool. Just, uh... All right, so you have to think about when you play, let's try a few different, different ways. Yeah. Okay. Think about um, when, you, when you play, when you place the bow, that actually, that you're, that you're aiming for not the string, but the back of the instrument. All right, mm -hmm. let's try that. <laughs> What do we think? Yeah, nods. All right, nice. Okay, so, so I try to, so that, that way, by doing it like that, you know, Robert doesn't have to change up anything. It's not like just play louder. It's, it's, it's a, we try to go with something that you can still retain the wonderful musicianship that you have and not to force anything, right? It's, you don't approach from the what, right? You approach from, 
the, the previous, the why, into the how, so that it can be through a lens, right? Otherwise, if we just said, hey, just press harder as a technique, then suddenly you don't know why, right? You don't, or it's, it's from the wrong, different side. It would become more forced, and that's not a good approach. So, okay, so that's, that's one thing. Um, let's try the beginning. Let's try the beginning, yeah. Okay, so, so here, I think like the same thing, the same thing applies, right? It's, it, of course, it's not the, it's a different character, right? Of course, but still, you have to think about the vertical. Try, try to think about what we just, apply what we said uh, back of the instrument, think about where, you, where are you leaning in to the note, okay? Try that. Yeah, okay. Let me let me try it. Maybe maybe you just need to watch me play your instrument and no, I'm just joking. Oh god. This is so stupid. Um, I think your mute is really too too powerful. <laughs> the mute the mute is too. Uh, let's try another mute because I think that it's a nice sound, but it's it's not it's it's muting too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you want to have a little bit of a of a of a, a muted sound, but not not too much. I think. Uh, all right, let's try this. Uh, I think that that's probably enough of a muted sound. Give that, give that a go, and then let's hear it. Okay, one other thing. I think we need to change your concept. I think that that's, otherwise it's too much approaching from the technical side, right? So I think we need to change your, the, the why behind this, this piece. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of the canzonetta? It's like a folk song. Folk song, right? Folk song, <laughs> right? So I think that you're being too careful and it is, it's a bit like walking on eggshells right now, mm. right? It's a, it's, everything's just too smooth. It's too, it's too civilized. You got to go back to the roots and you have to make me feel, make us feel like you're just so deeply connected to those roots, right? That, that it's not, the opposite of that is like everything's pristine, clean, you know, minimalistic. No, that's not what we need here, right? So try to, try to think about the framework. The mind needs to be like, Unapologetic. That's that's the that, that's the frame of mind. Try that. Back of the instrument. Aim for the back. Yeah. Okay. That's a little bit too forced. Why don't we try a different method? Um, that's a good frame of, keep the frame of mind. Now try to think about your instrument plays against the bow, right? So it's a German expression, uh, technique called 
Well, it's literally translated to against the bow. It's called Gegenbewegung. <laughs> and then you kind of like just opposite, right? So like when you place a down bow, like try, like just uh, any down bow, like ta. Yeah, but then you're up as well. And then while down at the same time, like that. Yeah, so go down further on, push, push more on your right hand. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so try that. Da -da. And so up bow is, let's try the up bow against it. A, a little more. Yeah, but more like against it, yeah. There you go. Okay, cool. Now let's try that. Unapologetic. Okay, that's good. I think you're thinking too much. I know, I, I know. Don't blame me, you're thinking too much about the, uh, just thinking too much in general. And then, which is the opposite again, to folk song. Folk song, very authentic, boom, like that, right? So you gotta, you gotta think about just, if there's anything you think about, it is simply just like, this is, this is the way. You watch Mandalorian? This is the way. <laughs> You know, this is the way, right? Da 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 da. da right? Yeah. It's very, very, very much like that. Okay. So very old, very like, very like. Think about the stubbornness, the like that is is needed. Like it, but that comes with that like age and experience. There is no, you tell how it is. That's how this sounds. That that's how this needs to sound. Right. against. Yeah, okay. One one last thing is as well. It's um you play very the, all of this, like, it's it's a bit like you you need to you need to tai chi it, you know. You need to like, like get get a little deeper as well. Okay, I want to show you something that's like very. Uh, okay, it's kind of embarrassing, but like, it's all right. We're all friends, right? <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so, like, position your feet like it like this. Have you done tai chi before, or were you about to start? All right, now. Like, lower the, you know, the, what did they call that? The tailbone? Down. Like, do it in, into a squat. This is called the horse stance. Right? Horse stance. All right. So, but you're, you're, you need to be more further back. Like, right. Yeah, there you go. Now play. All right. There you go. Cool. Well, don't change anything. Were you changing something? Oh, your, your sound sounds a lot deeper. All right, let's go. Uh, no, like, like, go, yep. <laughs> cool. All right, now start. I don't know if you noticed, but your sound is a bit deeper. 
like for some reason. <laughs> it's the whole stance. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I don't know. It's a funny thing. No, it's actually in the shoulders. So when you, when you pull your... The thing is when you pull your tailbone down, pulls your shoulders down, more constant weight, right? That's the why. So more constant weight on the string. It's just, oh, hey, how's it going? Wait, Tim? No, you just look like Tim. Oh my God, you look like Tim. <laughs> Giannis, yeah, but you're not Tim. No, but anyway. Hi. <laughs> it's just like a, a moment. <laughs> like, yeah, wow. Um, you had a very friendly look, very familiar look. Um, anyway, so, so, so there you have it. So try to remember that. If you, and and that's, that's done from a lens as well, right? Like where you don't have to change anything else. That's why it sounds like that. So, so just that, that'll be good for you to hear yourself like that, yeah? Um, I've got that, that's about it on the... Uh, can we just get the last moment? Um, the, last, the last time it happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. These are, these are cheaper than those, too. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. there we go, yeah. Okay, here, I think about it like this, right? I'm going to share. So... Dramatic, right? And then it's like that, you know, the moment in the, in the scene in the movie where it's like just the lonely spotlight and you're like, oh, wow. You know, it's like that. It's like, yeah, I like that. But like, you need to be, you need to commit to it. I am so lonely. You know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So one more time. Then we got to wrap it up. Okay. Okay, but you can't change characters in the middle of it. Otherwise, so you can't be like, this is so dramatic, and be like, yeah. <laughs> that's really weird, okay? You can't do that. that. I mean, well, you can, but then that's what happens, right? So you have to you, you think about what character you're changing into, right? You, by letting go, you can't just... It's not a blanket let go. That's why the why is important. Yada, 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 That's okay, right? Because it's a steady, but if you do a weird thing like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think we have to finish. So I'm so sorry, but thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, everyone give a round of applause. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll go over here. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Um, before you go, uh, Robert has agreed to have a quick chat with me. It would be great for us to hear about your experiences with the Australian Youth Orchestra. Yeah. Um, well, I've loved AYO. I've done it since, um, well, this is my fifth year, so I've done it for a few years. Um, and I knew from my first program that I would just love playing an orchestra for the rest of my life, really. Yeah, and ever since then, I've played such amazing music and met so many amazing people um, from all over the country, and it's, uh, 
amazing to do AYO. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now we will hear from Jasmine Milton. Jasmine will be playing the first movement of Mendelssohn's violin concerto. How's it going? Oh. Oh, okay, for the mic, for the later part. Okay, cool. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Yeah, it is. Okay. Now let's cut this one. Nice.
nice. Um, thanks so much. And uh, so your mic is not working? I don't think so. Is this working? So you, you, you can hold this then? Okay, cool. Is that working? Is this working? Yeah, it is working. Cool. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much. Jasmine, right? Yes. So, okay. Um, I was, uh, we were chatting earlier and you, uh, you told me that you have a performance coming up? Yeah, I'm playing the Mendelssohn with the Community Orchestra okay. in October. Okay, this is, that's great. So, October. So, what are we? June, July. Ju it's kind of July now. Okay, cool. So, all right. And have you played this with orchestra before? No. It's going to be your first time? Yeah. Okay. All right. This is important, Jasmine, because when you play with orchestra, you've got about like 60 people on stage, right? 50 to 60 people on stage. You've got a conductor. There's a lot of other people, yeah. right? So here's where things get complicated. When you are playing something yourself, you get to set the rules. Solo bar, for example. Anything you want goes, right? But as soon as, it's kind of like, like, like in life, when you, when you buy yourself and you're single, you know, and, or not single, but rather when you're just in your own home, you, you can do whatever, you can be whoever you want to be. However, as soon as another person comes into the picture, then suddenly you have to communicate. You have to do things. There are certain etiquettes and, you know, all that kind of, mm -hmm. depending on the setting, it's different, right? It's just different. And so what I'm trying to explain is that with orchestra, it gets more, the more people, the more everyone has to, it's more difficult to align everyone in the same, it's actually quite difficult to align 60 people to be having the same interpretation, all of yours. And your interpretation is pretty, pretty unique to you, mm. right? Uh, I, I, I don't know if you're aware of that, and yeah. you are, yeah. So I think that that's going to be very difficult for you with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Right now, have you guys rehearsed before? This morning, yeah. This morning? Okay. So there's going to be, that's going to be something that you... I think we'll have to compromise mm -hmm. and come to a, a, a bit of a, yeah. So when you're, when you're playing by yourself, you can do whatever, but when you're with the orchestra, certain, certain phrases, certain things like the tempi are going to have to go. And you can't take the time that you are currently taking. Right. Do you know which spots I'm talking about? Some of them. Yeah, yeah some of them, yeah. Okay, cool. So for example, Here, right, ta da 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 right there. <laughs> right. Right? You can take time. There's definitely enough Time taking. I think that for me, the most interesting part about being a musician is getting to be, it's a bit like an actor. You get to play different, you get to play different characters. Mm. And I think, and you fit within frameworks set by composers. In this particular case, it's Mendelssohn, right? So I think that the best part about being an artist is that if you're playing someone else's piece, you kind of have to, it's about like, how are you going to fit in? How are you going to, where's the creativity lies in that? How do you make it yours yet still adhere within Mendelssohn? Mm. Right? That's the balance that is always the challenge. Right? And so if, if in this particular section, you know, obviously you know, we could talk about the technical things like, oh, there's no, there's no tempo change written down and stuff like that. But then sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll do, you know, shifts in tempo. Music is always alive. It's never metronomic. So where is the balance, mm. right? That's always something to think about. Well, but the, the, I would say the general rule is, like, it needs, to, it, if you're going to make an adjustment to anything, you have to answer why. You need to have a good reason. So let me start by doing this right here, this section, why do you slow down there? Well, that, you've got a series of runs and they're all very similar, so it's just trying to make them different, but then without losing time. 
I guess. So Making currently. them different. Yeah. I think that's a good reason. Yeah. And so harmonic, harmonically, they're different, right? Like after this. Right here. And then. And then. Right? They, they, they are very different. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good reason. But we can still fulfill your objective without changing the time, right? Every change would cost you something. Mm. So make it worth it, right? Because every change is, yeah, it needs to be intentional with good reason. And if you have good reason, and then, then it's okay, right? But you, you could still fulfill your objective without changing the change the time. So why don't we try that? Okay. From there? Yeah, you, you can go and I'm sure he'll find his way. <laughs> why don't you go into it a little bit? Why don't you start a little bit before? Anywhere there. Things are beautiful, right? This is a beautiful passage. But when everything up close is very beautiful. I saw Ant-Man Quantumania the other day. I was like, oh yeah, this is a quantum, quantum realm. It's very beautiful when it's very close, right? I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think I know where I'm going with this, which means it's like, basically, you could, you could get really, really close into things and it could be just like mesmerizing but then you lose the bigger picture. Mm. And we operate in the bigger picture. The audience operates in the bigger picture. So here, where does it go, right? Think about, like you said, each, there's four times, right? That it happens. On the flip side, if you were to slow down too much, it could get boring. You just repeated, you just made a big deal four times, right? So argument this way, that way, why are you taking time, right? Mm. When there's no, no taking time indicated, there's not enough justification there, mm. right? So don't take time, try it. Have you tried it without taking time? Not completely without. You haven't even tried it. I don't think so. That's an offense, <laughs> yeah. So then, there's even worse of, no, I mean, that is a joke, but like, that's, you have to try everything. Mm. Yeah. You have to try taking time, try without taking time, try doing different things. Yeah, but it's always, you have to try everything. So that's what I feel when you play. You are in your world, but that's not relatable. Mm. And therefore, it's not relatable for an audience. It's difficult to relate even standing next to you. Uh, it's difficult to understand you. And then that leaves you with fewer options. So try this in tempo for the first time. <laughs> this is the debut. Jasmine, in tempo, let's go. Right there. feel it felt like I had more direction oh yeah like overall more direction yeah but did it feel like you lost yourself like you a lost a, bit. A, 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 a portion of yourself it's still there but it's 
It's no. still there, right? I could still hear it. I could still hear all the color changes. They were still there. That it had more direction and, but it did, yeah, so, so you see, it's always a balance. Mm. That's the balance I was referring to earlier. Yeah, so, so I think that, and usually I, I go under the general rule that if it's not my piece, it's, I can't make the rules, right? I can bend the rules. Yeah. I love bending the rules, but you know, you have to know how far you're bending it. That's called awareness, right? Awareness of yourself, of others, of the impact that you create to others. These are the three levels of awareness that go far in life. For this, you need to be very aware in music, right? Because you're always operating in other people's worlds even in Mendelssohn's world here. So something to think about, yeah. That's, that's, that's the why. That I could just easily have just said, play this in tempo. Mm. Yeah, don't take time. But I try to help you understand why. Yeah. That's the reason, okay? Cool, so let me see here. By the way, um, how long have you been working on this piece? Uh, I started at the beginning of last year, but then I kind of did it and then let it go for a bit. Beginning of last year? Beginning of last year. Oh yeah, nice. Cool. And um, beginning of last year. So how long total? Oh, I didn't play it until maybe a couple of months ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. Are you going to be using music on stage in the no. performance? Yeah? No. I think you know it well enough. I think that there's like a, hmm. like it's a you thing. Like you gotta, you yeah. gotta just take I the leap. Get in my head about it. Yeah, you're getting in, you're in your head a lot. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty, as you, you know, I think we all have figured out now, I'm a pretty deeply psychological person. But you, I think you're like, you're in a maze. You know, you gotta get out of that. You gotta like, just go and completely just, don't think about it, because it's so small. Mm. Where you, like, it, it's so much bigger. Like, things are so much bigger. Yeah. Just, just, just go out there and just like, just, just bulldoze over the maze. That's the way, I think, and then you'll feel free. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, so, let's see here. Let's start the beginning again. I wanna hear the beginning. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I felt that, yeah, round of applause. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry about that, but you know, this is this is this this thing here prevents you from communicating out there, right? So this time when you didn't have music, it was just like, sure. You know, there's a little a, a little thing, but it's just like so much more, you have so much more capacity to focus on making the music, you know, great. Like just making it communicate out there. It becomes more focused, more, more enjoyable. Yeah, for everyone. How did you feel? I think at the beginning you forgot that you needed to look at the music. Yeah, that was a nice feeling, right? And then you sort of got in your own head a after a while. Yeah. But like, I would say that, because I, 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 I could feel that, you know, what your wavelength like went into like a, oh wait, where's, like you were just enjoying it. But try to remember that feeling. That's where you need to be mm. at all times. But it's not, it takes practice. Mm. It does take practice. 
You can't just, exp if, if you practice with music all the time, you will, and, and then, and then you, you can't expect that you'll suddenly be able to play without music. Also, if you memorize, but you don't, like, you're, you're not in that zone of sharing, then you'll also uh, find it difficult to suddenly share. Like, suddenly it'll be like, there's a lot of inputs here. There's a lot of, like, people just, just there's, a, there's a lot of consciousnesses out there, right? And then that's, that's difficult. Can I, can I try? Let me, let me, like, there's two ways to go about performance. Mm. One way is to bulletproof yourself, is to, like, close yourself in, right? And you don't think about, everyone's a potato, right? It's just like that. Let me try this. And then the second method is to be very receptive to everyone's consciousness, right? And you're connected all times. You have to make yourself vulnerable. Mm. It is everyone's a human and you understand everyone. All right, let's try that. Different, right? Mm. Different types of performing, right? And I think that the uh, old school method is the first type, and uh, the, the new school, or at least my, my method is sort of like, you know, the second type. Yeah. The first type is very, uh, you're all potatoes. <laughs> is that right? Like that's, a, that's, that's the, you get that, you get that feel, right? And um, yeah, it's just up to you. But you have to practice. The sec Either type you have to practice. Mm. And the, and the second type, you definitely have to practice. Yeah. Um, I actually made an app that, that you can uh, practice the second type. Yeah, it's called Tonic. Anyway, you should check it out. It's free. <laughs> Tonic plug. Um, no, it's actually, yeah, so you open practice room, and people can come in to your practice room. They can't see you, though, so you just, like, practice your streaming. But then being conscious of suddenly practice and performing, it's like it melds into one, mm. just sharing. It's very, it's very helpful if you want to practice the second option. Yeah. Anyway, go check it out. Tonic, it's free. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all we have time for today. But um, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah try, try. There you go. Thanks so much. So I think that's your name. What's your name? Also, a big round of applause for Aiden. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine, for allowing us to come into this workshop space. I think that was very interesting. Thanks. Um, Ray. Yes. Come up here. Oh. <laughs> While we prepare for our next participant, I'd like to ask you some questions about your violin. You've received some pretty amazing instruments on loan, and I think you have the Dolphin Stradivarius now. That's right. Um, how do these violins get offered, and how do you cope with you know, getting a new one, getting to know it, and then having to give it back? Yeah, so um, this one's been on loan to me. It's a Stradivarius made in 1714. It used to belong to Yasha Heifetz. And uh, yeah, it's called the Dolphin. <laughs> it's it's for the high-pitched sound. Um, no, it's, Apparently, um, a dealer had seen the back of it and decided, oh, it reminds him of the skin of a dolphin. So uh, that's what, why it's called that. But um, yeah, these instruments, uh, well, they're sadly very unaffordable uh, these days. But uh, I'm lucky enough that a foundation in Japan, the Nippon Music Foundation, has loaned this particular instrument to me. And um, yeah, I've, throughout, the, throughout the years, I've played on different instruments. I mean, when you're a student, you sort of, you have your own instrument, but you also, at 
opportune moments, you get loaned an instrument and you're like, oh wow, this, I need to you know, figure this instrument out. That's usually my take on it. And then you know, eventually you do have to give it back, right? So this process is something that uh, pianists do on a daily basis <laughs> whenever they're performing, right? So um, I think that on the negative side is easy to identify. However, on the positive, it helps you to learn from these instruments. You absorb their sound in a way, and then it becomes a part of you to carry on. That becomes part of your sound, so that you can take that to the next instrument. Right? There's all these stories of um, these great violinists like Chrysler, Heifetz. It didn't matter which instrument they played. They sounded like them. Right? So that's something that I always try to think about when I'm playing an instrument. You know, you're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a back and forth. And of course, you know, there's a bit of pressure. I mean, if Heifetz once played this instrument, then I'm like, uh, am I good enough? <laughs> am I the best you've ever had? No. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a bit like dating someone with a, a vast amount of experience. <laughs> but, uh, a bit yeah. intimidating, huh? <laughs> a, little, a little intimidating, but, you know, after a while, you, 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 you make, you create new memories. Very special. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, finally, we will hear from In E. Che, who will be workshopping the first movement of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto.
All right, well done. How do you feel? A bit tired. A bit tired. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about like what would be the highest leverage thing to, to say that I think like, because you know, there's, there's many things I could be like, hey, I think you're, you're using, like you could use the lower half of the bow more mm -hmm. to work, work, make the weight of your bow arm work for you rather than against you. Mm -hmm. there's, there's things like that, there's technical things like that. There's, there's stuff like, you know, when you go down into, so a few technical things first, you know, here like, don't, don't go too, too, mm -hmm. too deep, uh, too yeah. soft. Yeah. You can't, you mm -hmm. can't like, you know, go, go too soft. Yeah. So there's stuff like that. But then I was just thinking like, it, you know, growing up in Australia, right? You, you grew up here yeah. in Australia? Yeah. It's like, which is too nice. <laughs> I mean it. Like, I think that the music, for music like this, you need to be, you need to be ruthless. You need to be what it needs you to be. Mm -hmm. You can't be apologetic about it. I feel like, you know, throughout this evening, you know, it's been like, it's the same, it's the same thing that this is the common thing here, and I think like I was like this before. It's like, you need to ask why. You need to, there needs to be more defiance, you know? It's too, I'm gonna follow the rules, and you can't do that. You have to, I mean, it's, it yet, yet, you, yet you have to know the rules before you break them, right? So there's, 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 there's balances to this, but I think for you, it's like the way, you, when, it doesn't matter who you are, it's who you need to be in this moment, mm -hmm. right? You can be whoever you are off stage. But when you're on stage, you can't be apologetic, right? Like, I see you and, you know, you're shy and you're, and that's nice, but like, I, I want to hear, I want to hear Tchaikovsky, you know? Yeah, I think that's one thing. So, try not to, try to, try to think about who you need to be in this moment. So. to be like in this moment a very yeah um, what's the character here just it needs to be a little pushy a little insistent you know and 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 you can't let anything else like get in the way of that so so and and then in other moments like here uh, It starts playful and then it becomes like more insistent, right? Uh... I mean, it's, it's like for, 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 I think like even like pushing past everything mentally mm -hmm. is like something that needs to happen in, I think as like a performer, you just have to, like I early, uh, earlier I said to Jasmine, I was like, you know, whatever frame 
mindset you're in, you know, she was like sort of in her, there was a bubble. I was like, you need to just push through it. Y yeah, yeah, so just, just push through it. Anyway, um, and, and every, you'll find that everything, some things that were actually causing you trouble technically will, will just disappear mm -hmm. because you just, you just go through it. You just bulldoze through it. Yeah, yeah. very important. Um, so can we start from maybe... Oh, well, we didn't do this, right? This is... Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Can we start from, like, just here, the main theme, I, letter I? I think that's L. Oh, L? Cool. Just right off the curtains, uh, yeah. You want, you, why don't you go... Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can you think about like when you make a note happen, <clears throat> can it happen already? The, so what I mean is like right now there's a little bit of like this. This, that's, that's your vibe. It needs to be in. Even in, even in vulnerable moments like that, it needs to be honest and open about, uh, unapologetic. You know, you just, it, I'm, yeah. Like you, you have to be, it have to be, it has to be just be like, yes, I'm lonely, like that, or like, yes, I'm, this is how I, this is how it is, yeah, I'm scared, not like, you know, yeah, don't act through it, don't, don't, don't play, don't, don't, have, that's like an extra thing you have to cycle through before you get to the truth, right? Just be the truth, yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait a second. That was good. That was good. And then, on strong notes, don't don't like do this thing where you're like, like I'm playing strong, you know. <laughs> Just play it. Right? Yeah. You you tell it. You know, right, right there, yeah. Uh, can you say hey? No, oh, you can start wherever. Da, 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 da. Um. You start, and I'm sure he will catch up. Yeah. That's great. Now, uh, so you, I could tell that you were, that, that we, we got a layer like closer to the source, right? There was definitely that. You could feel that. Now you have to amplify it, right? So that you do through technique mm -hmm. and how, the, how we do that. So when you play, um, you know, towards the end, you were starting to, it was starting to roll on top of itself a little bit. So, this will help that by, by when you anchor, anchor pulses, like, um, and the pulses are in the orchestra, right? So, uh, for example, when you play...
notice that like when I'm playing, I always leave space. Like even if I get arrived there too soon, I'll always leave a space and then make the downbeat. For example, here. I don't go just because I'm there already. I don't go So that means that I have absolute control over the pulse and the I'm projecting rhythm now. Okay, so let's talk about projection real quick. Projection in general is sound. Sound is like just the general thing about projection, right? It's the general term. But within sound, there's projecting like volume, right? And then there's projecting different things, projecting, let's say, uh, intention, like emotion. And then there's projecting rhythm, okay? I would say that those are probably the three things you need to project, right? And sometimes in moments, you know, our mind can only focus on one, like a primary and maybe a few secondaries, maybe two. So that primary was going to switch mentally, right? So here it is about projecting, I would say, uh, for example. It's like that, that the, these two different ideas. I'm projecting the, 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 uh, the emotion this lightness, and then suddenly I switch. I switch to projecting the rhythm. But then I switch back in to emotion. So listen. Combine the two, I combine projection and emotion. <laughs> Pretty much pr like just the just the rhythm right there. And so so think about that. Right? Try that. J uh, why don't you start from right there? Projecting? Uh, projecting, projecting, yeah, projecting. It, yeah, but projecting is also, and I think that your sound should project as well. It will, it, it should carry as well. Yeah. Okay, let's try a, a little. Uh, uh, I'm getting the. We have to wrap this up, but I would like to try this. Can you just project sound? Let's let's clearly define what projecting just just volume would be. Let's project volume. Okay, you, you, your your sounding point is off. You need to be closer to the bridge. Raise your violin. You need to be closer to the bridge. Closer to the bridge. More bow weights. Closer to the bridge. There you go. Okay, it's yeah, it's hard to do it in the moment. That was, that was a that was a great effort. And so, do you do you hear that? Like, what? Why like I keep it close to the bridge, close to the bridge. Like you know. So I think that's one thing that you can focus on as well. And then projecting. That's just projecting volume, right? And then then you need to practice that in itself until it's second nature. And then 
it's easier to practice that and then dial and then not think about it. Not even dial back, but just don't think about it then. It becomes secondary nature and then you focus on a new primary objective, which is, might be to project the other two things. I would, I would suggest that you practice it like that. And then you can switch be between these and be playful, and, you know, emotional, whatever it needs to be, you know, if it's like, a, you know, uh. Like, I'm fully, right now, like, there's no rhythm to project, right? So I'm just pretty much just fully 100% projecting the emotion in, in, a, in a place like that. Right? So different things that you're focusing on. But always, I like to use the word project instead of focus because project is put it, pushing it out, right? Focus is kind of like, could be like just you and your focus, all right? So anyway, I think, uh, I think we've got to wrap up, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Ine, for sharing your masterclass with us tonight. And with that performance, it brings us almost to the end of tonight's event. But before we go, I wanted to ask Ray one last question. Um, just like two of our participants tonight, this week you are performing Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto with MSO. You must have played this hundreds of times before. How do you bring something new to each performance? I think that, you know, with just like what we were just talking about now with the different focuses, right? There's just so many things to focus on, right? Throughout the evening, you witnessed this. It seemed like there were so many layers, right? In itself, it's, it's sort of a never ending thing. In, in, in some ways, it's almost like one of those giant, you know, uh, cathedral restoration projects where you just start on one end and by the time you finally finish it, you got to do it again. And so, and each time, on top of that, you draw from inspiration, from you know, life, from your experiences. These, these pieces, I mean, don't change, but you do, right? They're a reflection of who you are. And each time you approach it, it's going to be different. It's always going to be different because you'll have changed. If it's not, it means that you've got to get out there and you know, experience more. So that's, that's how these pieces are, and as, as, as long as you are always open and, and sort of with, with yourself and, you know, that with the peace and what, what, what it needs to be, it, it will it'll naturally, you'll know what to do. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's when you're sort of too tense and you just sort of, okay, I've got to think about, and you're only thinking about one particular thing, like a technique or something like that, or getting it right. That's when it's not open and it's not uh, clear to the whatever the piece needs you to be. No. What amazing insight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ray, for leading these masterclasses. I think it's sa safe to say that we have all learned a lot. And if you don't yet have your ticket to hear Ray perform Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto with MSO this week, please do head to our website to grab those few remaining seats. It is a very popular concert indeed. Thank you to our audience here, and thank you to those of you watching on the live stream, which will be available to watch again on MSO.live. These types of programs are vital for the development of emerging artists, so we warmly thank our Music and Ideas supporters, the Crown Resorts Foundation, the Packer Family Foundation, and City of Melbourne. And of course, finally, an enormous thank you to Ini Che, Jasmine Milton, Robert Smith, and, pianist, and pianist Aidan Bowes for allowing us to come and share this amazing masterclass experience. Thank you all once again, and good night. Thank you.